everybody, and welcome to this week's Down the Shore. Today we're going to be going out on the River Lady. We're going to take an historical tour of Tom's River. And there's a lot of history to Tom's River that you probably don't know about, so we're going to take the tour and see what we can learn and have a good time while we're doing it. Beautiful day, so come and join it's a beautiful us. Beautiful day, come on. in just a few minutes at this time i'd like to make a couple brief announcements first i'd like to introduce your crew serving you on board today on the first deck is jessica and regina and on the top deck is ronnie jean before we get underway we do have a couple brief safety announcements we are required to let you know where life jacket storage is located on the river lady so on the first deck just before you come inside the front door to your left and to your right is both child and adult life jacket lockers and on the upper deck, on the left side, or port side of the pilot house, there's also adult life jacket storage. At this time, if you give your attention to a crew member at each bar, we'd like to show you the proper procedure for putting on a life jacket should it become necessary. It is rather simple. The jacket is placed over your head. The strap goes around your back and it clips to the front. If you have any questions in reference to the life jackets or any safety procedures, don't hesitate to see a crew member. River Lady is a true stern wheeler. The paddles that you see at the back of the boat are our only means of propulsion. We do not have any propellers. We are 85 feet long, 26 feet wide, and draw three and a half to four feet of water. The body of water we're sitting on right now is the Tom River. We'll be cruising on the Tom River out to the Barney Bay. We'll be looking for the restrooms. They're located on the first deck just as you go inside the front door. Please be careful going in and out of the first deck as there is a threshold you need to step over. Smoking on the River Ladies allowed out on the outside or upper decks only. Please do not smoke on the lower enclosed deck or in the restrooms. And if you engine buffs on board, give you a little bit of information about the boat itself. The engines we have in here are a pair of Cummings diesels, 6 BTs, 5.9 liter. They run hydraulic pumps off the back of the motor and 30 kW generators off the front. So we do not have any propellers on the River Lady. She is strictly a stern wheeler. The only way we cheat is we do have the paddles are split, so we can put one in forward, one in reverse, in order to maneuver us in a small area. We do have two rudders on the boat. However, they don't work very well unless you have a lot of water going past them. So we use those once we're out, but docking we use just the paddles. Hope you enjoy your trip today. And if you have any questions in reference to the boat itself or anything we're passing by, don't hesitate to see any of our crew members. Enjoy the rest of the day. We're now going to be entering the little bit wider portion of the Tom River. And as we do, coming up on our starboard side, we have the riverfront community of Beechwood. The borough of Beechwood was established in 1917, and the way that it came about is the New York Tribune newspaper was used as a promotion scheme. Basically what happened is if you bought a six-month subscription to the New York Tribune and paid them an additional just under $20, you received a building lot of Beechwood. Well, as you can imagine, this campaign proved to be a success. Beachwood was incorporated in this borough in 1917. Today, you need two of those building lots in order to build a home in the borough of Beachwood. If you look along Beachwood's shoreline, you'll see a modern-looking building with a brown roof and a blue awning. That's the Beachwood Yacht Club. It's one of five yacht clubs on the Tom River that offers sailing programs for its youth. 
Massachusetts club has gained notoriety nationally through the accomplishments of two natives, Gary Jobson and Bill Campbell. Jobson is an ESPN and ABC TV commentator, and he was tactician aboard Ted Turner's 1977 America's Cup winner, Courageous. Bill Campbell's a three-time All-American sailor, and he served on board Bill Cook's 1992 America's Cup winner, America 3. Both of these sailors started off their sailing careers here at the Beachwood Yacht Club's Junior Sailing Program. As we continue along the shorelines of Beachwood, you'll notice a lot of municipal boat docking facilities, boardwalks, and beach areas. Because a majority of the waterfront of Beachwood is actually owned by the borough, therefore giving all, all of its residents equal access to this natural resource, the Tom's River. We'll be coming up on Beachwood's municipal bathing beach in a few minutes off our starboard side. Before Beachwood was incorporated as a borough, charcoal from Lakehurst and Manchester was dumped on their beach. The charcoal was brought to Beachwood by mule teams pulling cartloads of it along a wooden railroad. The Beachwood uh, Municipal Beach here was also a busy port with two and three masted schooners loading this charcoal for the coastal trade. Before anthracite coal was discovered in Pennsylvania in the 1840s, charcoal was a primary source of heat in our early American homes. It was also used as steam power in some of our early steamboats. Now, one of the biggest merchants in the charcoal industry at the time down here at the shore was a man by the name of Nathan Whiting. Now, he had a uh, business going out in the Manchester Township area. And that's who the town of Whiting, New Jersey is named after, Nathan Whiting, a very big businessman in the charcoal industry. Basically over here you have our engine instrument panel, it tells you RPMs, how many RPMs the engine's turning, it's turning 1800, it gives us engine oil, pressure, water temperature, voltmeter, and also hour meters, how many hours the engines actually have on them. And then I want to move over on the dash to this area here, this says speed, well it's actually speed of the paddles, not the speed of the boat. The paddles are turning 8.9 revolutions per minute, not very fast, but it's very efficient. We have a depth sounder here, which is basically sonar, telling you the depth of the water underneath the bow of the boat. Um, up on the top here, we have VHF, which is a marine radio, access the Coast Guard or any other vessel. Rudder angle indicator over here tells us how our rudders are facing. Remember when we're going to the right or the left, or port or starboard, if you know nautical terms. Of course, the compass, which uh, every vessel has, in case we have to steer a specific course. And the controls for the uh, paddles themselves to regulate the speed of the paddles. And then up on the top here, we have radar. Radar really isn't used too much during the day, but if we were to get a fog bank, if we roll into the fog, or also in the evening, if we want to make sure we can see everything, we would use the radar at that point. Pretty much it, besides the ship's wheel, and we all know what that does. <laughs> Off to our starboard side, we have the former location of Admiral Farragut Academy. Just beyond the trees there, you'll see a large building that used to be the Pine Beach Inn. The Tudor Style Inn was built in 1910 as a gathering place for the early residents and guests of the town. It was occupied up until 1925 then became vacant, remained vacant until 1933. It was then that Captain Pettit and Lieutenant Lahan became convinced of a need for a private school with naval training. After searching the Atlantic seaboard for a prime location, he came across his old hotel. Admiral Farragut Academy was named in honor of the first official admiral commissioned in the United States Navy by a special act of Congress back in 1866. Admiral David Farragut is best known for his Civil War cry in Mobile Bay, Damn the Torpedoes, full speed ahead. We 
Academy was in operation until the spring of 94, then it had to close down due to financial difficulties. The campus spread over 28 acres, included six major buildings, two gymnasiums, three large playing fields, and other recreational facilities. Shepherd Hall, one of the buildings on the campus, is named after Alan B. Shepherd, an alumnus of Farragut. Some of you might remember who Alan Shepherd is, and for those of you who don't, he is a famous astronaut, as he was the first American in space. And even more famous for his voyage to the moon, where he was the astronaut that hit the golf ball up on the moon. Called Renegade, the actor Lorenzo Lamas. He graduated from Admiral Farragut Academy also. Just past Farragut on the shoreline there, you'll see a lime green building with a dark green roof. That's the Pine Beach Yacht Club. Like the Beachwood Yacht Club, they offer sailing programs for their youth, as well as being a member of the Barnegat Bay Yacht Racing Association. Both the Yacht Club and Admiral Farragut Academy are said to be built on the site of an old Indian burial ground. As Pine Beach was an Indian settlement hundreds of years ago, and when they were digging the foundation for the old Pine Beach in back in 1910, they came across quite a few Indian artifacts, such as some old Indian pottery, and also an old Indian canoe. Yes, I did! Once we go off to our starboard side, that's our right side, towards the back of the boat a little bit, you'll see Cocktail Cove. In Cocktail Cove, there's some sailboats moored. Just beyond where the sailboats are moored, there's a creek that feeds into the top over here that's known as Mill Creek. Mill Creek is actually the dividing line between the town of Pine Beach and Berkeley Township. During the 18th century, it used to be a favorite hiding spot for smugglers and privateers. And during the Prohibition years, rough runners used to hide up in that creek to avoid the Coast Guard patrol boats. So the property off to our starboard side now is Berkeley Township. A small part of Berkeley Township is actually on the Toms River. It's known as the Toms River Shore section. We'll be along the shoreline for about a quarter mile, then coming up on the riverfront community of Ocean Gate. We'll be talking about the north side of the Toms River. Um, okay. We're now coming up on the shorelines of Ocean Gate. The way you can tell that is if you look along the shorelines here, you'll see a white sandy beach area, and a stone jetty and a miniature red and white lighthouse. That miniature red and white lighthouse is a replica of the Vining Lighthouse, located about 10 miles to our south. It was constructed back in 1976. It's privately owned and maintained, and although it is limited night, it is not considered an aid to navigation. It does, however, mark one of the first pieces of property along the shorelines of Ocean Gate. Unlike other towns along the southern shore of the town River, Ocean Gate consisted not of pine trees, but rather of orchards and farmland, much of which was owned by Captain Caleb Grant. He was the gentleman we spoke about earlier that built the last two-masted sailing schooner off of Eagle Point of Pine Beach. Due to Ocean Gate's isolation from the main road, the establishment of a self-sufficient commercial district was highly attractive. Today, Ocean Gate remains much the same since it was incorporated as a borough. Small bungalows of 1910 are still living throughout, and there's only been a little bit of modern construction. If you look out again to our starboard side, you'll see a white building directly off our starboard side that has a black roof and some boats docked behind it. That is the Ocean Gate Yacht Club. The Ocean Gate Yacht Club was formed in 1910 in the response to the popularity of recreational and competitive sailing on the River and Bay. The original one-story building was constructed in 1911. It just underwent a complete restoration project when they actually redid the whole interior, lifted up the building, and built the foundation underneath it. The club's prominent position at the foot of Ocean Gate Avenue indicates the role for which it is always fulfilled within their community. We're going to start to make our turn out here, and we're at the mouth of the Tom River. It's here that the Tom River meets the Barnegat Bay. A nice clear day, so you can see all the way out across the bay. On the far side of the Barnegat Bay, coming up on our starboard side, is the Barrier Island towns of Seaside Heights and Seaside Park. If you continue looking along the shorelines of Ocean Gate, out at the end of Ocean Gate, you'll see a uh, peninsula of land with a lot of poles and wires on it. All those poles and wires are actually a series of antenna used as a ship-to-shore communications facility. Basically what that means, that allows a boat with a marine radio to access the land telephone line. A little choppy out on the bay, you can see some uh, white caps. 
but uh, they don't really affect us too much because of the uh, size of the vessel. And right now we're in only six feet of water, believe it or not. You look out here and you figure, boy, it's got to be deep. But the average depth of the river in this area, as well as the rest of the area, is actually five to six feet in the bay. It's actually even more shallow than the river. The channel is probably goes up to maybe seven feet in depth. But there's a lot of places in the bay that only have about a half a foot of water. So you actually have to know where you're going to the Barney Bay. Otherwise, you'll get stuck on a sandbar, which happens quite often on the weekends when you get boaters down that aren't familiar with the area and um, don't have enough sense to go and buy a chart to see exactly where they should be going and shouldn't be going. The bridges off in the distance there are known as the Mathis and Tunney Bridges. It's Route 37 eastbound and westbound. They connect the Barrier Island towns over to the mainland. The mainland is Dover Township, known to most of you as Tom's River. The Breezy Point section is right where the bridge is. So then a little bit further up here on our right is the Guilford Park section. We're going to be coming up on the town of Island Heights. Once we get up the river a little bit further, we'll get a good view of that. We're now headed into the wind, so if you think it was windy on the way down, well, it's even windier on the way back. But at least there's no humidity. It's a little cooler than you probably like it, but definitely a lot better than uh, the hot, humid weather we've been having. As we head back, we'll still be into the wind, so hold on to your hats. But if you would have been out here last week, it was blowing like this, but not only that, it was raining cats and dogs, so can't have everything. Coming up on our starboard side, we're going to be passing a red buoy on the Tom's River. Buoy number 10 on the Tom's River marks Long Point. Between that red buoy and the shoreline off to our starboard side, there's a large sandbar. It goes down to less than two feet of water as you get closer to the shoreline. The land that is off to our starboard side is the southeast corner of Island Heights, formerly known as Eagle, not the uh, Eagle Point, that's Pine Beach, formerly known as Westry Point. Now, Westry Point is the site that the Tom's River Yacht Club held its first sailing regatta, or race, back in July of 1871. They raced from this point down to Forkett River and back. The winner of the race was awarded the Silver Trophy. This trophy has become known as the Tom's River Challenge Cup, and it's still raced for to this present day. The Challenge Cup that was awarded on that day was made by Tiffany's of New York City. It's actually the oldest perpetual racing trophy in the United States. It's been raced for every year since 1871. We're going to be traveling along the shorelines of Island Heights now. Island Heights was first developed in 1887 as a Methodist camp meeting. That's about 370 registered Victorian homes that grace its waterfront as well as its side streets. We're going to see quite a few of those nice homes as we travel along their shoreline today. Coming up on our starboard side, we have a couple of marinas along the shorelines here of Island Heights. They're known as Cozy Cove Marina and Nelson Yacht Basin. Both of these marinas used to build wooden boats up until the late 1940s, early 1950s. Now they're primarily storage and repair facilities. If you notice where the marina's end, you'll start to see some houses up on these high cliffs in Island Heights. Indians are also upset to have a settlement piece of a ceremonial house on top of these high cliffs that overlook the mouth of the river. One Indian in particular lived there. His name was Indian Tom. He was a spy for the British. However, he would spy for the Patriots for a little white lightning. Some believe it was Indian Tom on whom the Tom's River was named. Most local historians credit a man that came to the area a little bit sooner, a man by the name of Thomas Luker. Luker came to this area around 1700, at which time he married Princess Anne, an Indian chieftain's daughter. They were given a parcel of land upriver in the vicinity of where Huddy Park now sits. That's where they're having the Wood Boat Festival today. 
and it was there that they lived the Indian lifestyle. Thomas Luker also had a little business going up at that end of the river. There was not a bridge that crossed at the time. So he used to operate a little barge ferry system. So if you wanted to take your wagon or cattle across the river, you would contract with Thomas Luker. That's why the local historians believe they named the river after him, because he would get you across. Prior to that, the Tom's River was known as Goose Creek. But so we're just passing by the Island Heights Pavilion. That green and white pavilion hosts concerts on certain evenings in the summertime for Island Heights residents and their guests, and also has a town dock there. And then coming up a little bit further up on our starboard side is the Island Heights Yacht Club. That's the yellow and cedar shaped building you see coming up on our starboard side. They have junior sailing programs, as well as being a member of the Barnegat Bay Yacht Racing Association. Some ladies laying down on the bow. To our starboard side, you'll see the words Island Heights written in a grassy area here on the sh shoreline. It was at this point in Island Heights that a railroad trestle bridge used to cross the river from Island Heights over to our port side to the town of Pine Beach. It was part of the Pennsylvania Railroad known as the Island Heights Junction. The, uh, the railroad trestle bridge did have a manually operated swing bridge on it that used to allow boat traffic to go through. The railroad was very influential to the development of the Jersey Shore, and especially here to the town of Island Heights. As it started off predominantly as a summer resort for wealthy Philadelphia merchants, it would spend either weekends or summers here at the Jersey Shore. Island Heights is now about 80% year-round and only about 20% summer homes. But the majority of the people who live in Island Heights do have ties to the Philadelphia area. Left the shorelines of Island Heights. We're now coming up on a smaller island west of Island Heights known as Money Island. It is a part of Dover Township or Tom's River. Money Island got its name from the bounty that Captain Kidd supposedly hid there, from which he had removed from a British brig that he captured off of Island Beach back about 1690. Rumor has it he buried the treasure under a three pronged white birch tree, but no one to this day has found it. Money Island is also the current home of the Tom's River Yacht Club. That's the great building you see off to our starboard side with the blue warning. As we mentioned at the beginning of our trip, the Tom's River Yacht Club was established back in 1871, celebrating its 125th anniversary this year. It was originally located up on Robbins Parkway and Robbins Cove. They moved down here to Money Island for a larger facility in deeper water. They are the oldest yacht club on the Barnegat Bay and one of the oldest yacht clubs in the United States. Off to our starboard side, we're now passing by Haynes Point. It was off of this point of John Peter Haynes' dairy farm that Simon Lake submerged his first submarine. Simon Lake was an inventor who lived in South Tom's River and attended the Tom's River school system. Over 20 of his inventions are still used on submarines today. Simon Lake came from a family of inventors. His uncle Jesse invented the roll-up window shade, which is found in so many of our books today. Also, this cove that we're coming up on now is known as Mary's Cove. In Mary's Cove, you get to see the remaining nine-hole golf course, which today is the Tom's River Country Club. So as we continue up the river, if we continue looking off our starboard side, we'll get a good view of the nine-hole Tom's River Country Club. Starboard side, we have the last residential development we'll be passing on our trip today. It is a part of Dover Township, known as the Flag Point Development, consists of about 20 or so custom homes. One of the waterfront estates coming up on our starboard side, you'll see, has some small white houses with red roofs, a little white sandy beach area, an umbrella. That's the former estate of Admiral Rosendahl. He was the commander out at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station at the time of the Hindenburg disaster. He lived here on this waterfront estate until he passed away about 15 or so years ago. The estate is now owned by a local doctor. It's on just about an acre of property on the river that has a main house, a guest house, and groundskeeper's quarters. It's a very secluded estate. In order to get to it, you have to drive through the woods and over a little wood bridge. It's definitely one of the nicest waterfront estates on the Tom River. 
you'll see a two-story blue colonial with black shutters. It was the exterior of this home that was used for the filming of the movies Amityville Horror and Amityville Horror 2. The exterior of that home looks similar to the one that the movie was about, which was a supposed haunted house in Amityville, Long Island, so they decided to do the filming here on the Tom's River. Again, that's the blue house with the black shutters directly off our starboard side. This concludes the historical narration portion of our cruise. Hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather we have out here. We'll be back to the dock in about 10 minutes. Again, thanks for coming aboard. The Ripper Lady does run a full schedule until the end of September. And we're available also for private parties, such as birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, and other special occasions. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. historical narration portion of our cruise. Hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather we have out here. We'll be back to the dock in about 10 minutes. Again, thanks for coming aboard. The Ripper Lady does run a full schedule until the end of September. And we're available also for private parties, such as birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, and other special occasions. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. concludes our historical view of Tom's River and its surrounding communities. On the way back, we also found a historical treasure right here in downtown Tom's River. This is from the aircraft carrier, the USS Randolph CV-15. This thing weighs 15 tons. The USS Randolph served with distinction during kamikaze attacks in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Uh, it also uh, later joined uh, fleets in the Atlantic and the uh, Mediterranean, and it played a part in America's early space program. As a matter of fact, it recovered astronaut Gus Grissom from his Mercury space capsule. And it returned John Glenn, who was the first American to orbit the Earth, to Grand Turk Island for medical exams. This anchor is also a symbol of the early shipping commerce on the Toms River, which helped build the village as a commercial center. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Joe, why don't you tell them what we have on tap for next week? I don't know what we have on tap for next week why because not? I haven't been into the editing room, okay? Once I get into the editing room, then we'll edit some stuff and... So stuff. just come back next week and you'll come see what's, up, what's on the show. Yeah, it'll be something great. It'll be something exciting. Right? Have a good week. Nobody wants to say the first goodbye. Every time I see you cry I know it's